Hello. Welcome to Module 8, Statement of Cash Flows. Statement of cash flows is very important. The statement of cash flows describes where a company's cash came from and where it went during a period. So it allows a company's investors or anybody interested in the company to examine exactly how cash was managed by the company. This statement analyzes inflow and outflow of cash to a company in three these categories are cash flows from operating activities, cash flows from investing activity, and cash flow from financing activity. When you add up the cash from the three different categories, you get the total cash for the period. You add it to the balance at the beginning of the period, and you get the ending cash balance for the company. I put in some hypothetical numbers to make it easy for you to understand. Let's say the cash flows from operating activity was 10,000. Cash flow from investing activity was 25,000. And cash flow from financing activity was 30. So, in total, for the period, the company generated 65,000 in cash. Assume the beginning balance was 5,000. So if you had 5,000 at the beginning of the period and you generated 65,000 of cash, your balance at the end of the period is 70,000. Before we go on, it's very important for you to know the difference between the three types of activities. It's very important. So, let's go through the key definitions. We'll talk about operating activity, investing activity, and financing activity. What is operating activity? This is money received or money paid relating to normal business activity. The key important word is normal. Example, proceeds from the sales of inventory or cash paid for purchasing inventory. Would you agree that it's part of normal business activity? So any cash paid or received, for example, sales of inventory or cash paid for purchasing inventory, any cash paid or received relating to keyword normal business activity comes under operating. So what's investing? This is money received or paid relating to buying or selling of long-term assets. Keyword, long-term assets. Examples? If you buy or sell equipment, the money you paid or the money you received by selling equipment comes under investing. Why is that? Because equipment, by definition, as I told you in Module 1, is a long-term asset. 
So any money received or paid relating to buying or selling long-term assets come under investing activity. What's financing? It's money received or paid relating to financing the company's activities. Example, when the company issues common stock, they issue, that's part of financing. So the money received would go under financing. When they get a loan, loan is financing. So money received would come under financing. Have you got this? I want you to do a little exercise for me. I'll give you some transactions and I want you to tell me if they relate to operating, investing, or financing activity. Have a look at this. Which of these are operating, which are investing, and which are financing? What I want you to do is stop this recording and do this exercise. Print this out and do this exercise for me. And I just want you to put a check under operating, investing, financing. This is very important. It's very important for you to be able to differentiate between the three groups before we proceed. Okay, let me do one for you. The first one, purchase of equipment for $20,000. Equipment is long-term. It's a long-term asset. So the cash paid for equipment would be under investing. Okay, now stop this recording. Do this exercise, and when you're done, start again. I'll give you the answers. Are you done? Okay, let's see how good you are. Here are the answers. Purchase of equipment, I think we already did it. The cash, 20000 you paid, would be shown under the investing column. 40000 long-term debt, where did you put it? If you put it in financing, you got it right. Cash received $40,000, long-term debt would be shown under financing activity. Sold 20000 to customers on account. Where would you stick that? If you said operating, you got it right. Purchase $15,000 of inventory. Where did you put that? If you did it operating, you got it right. Repaid $20,000 long-term debt. Where did you put that? If you said financing, repaying of a loan is part of financing, you got it right. Collected $80,000 from sale of land. Where did you put that? If you said investing, you got it right. You paid accounts payable $15,000 on money owing. This is tricky, but Purchasing stuff from suppliers, would you buy that is part of your normal business activity? So the 15000 you paid to your supplier would come under, there you go, operating activity. Received $50,000 from accounts receivable. Would you buy 
that's selling to customers and getting cash from them is part of normal business activity? So the answer to this one is operating activity. Proceeds from issuing $50,000 worth of common stock. So you issued common stock and you received $50,000 cash. Where would that come under? If you said financing, you got it right. So this is the first skill you should have. When you look at a transaction, you should be able to categorize it as operating, investing, or financing. This is important because where you stick it does matter. If, for example, um, a cash receipt should have been operating, but you didn't know the difference, and you put it under investing, it does make a big difference when you analyze the financial health of the company and you could actually say or conclude that a company is in poor health when it's in good health if you make this mistake. So it's very important for you to be able to differentiate between operating, investing and financing. I want you to do a short exercise for me. Let's call our hypothetical company Sylvester Stallion Company. The accountant figured out the cash from operating, investing, and financing activities, and here it comes. Cash flows from operating activity 15,000 negative first year, 20,000 negative second year. Cash flow from investing activity, positive 30,000 first year, positive 40,000 second year. Cash flow from financing activity, positive 25,000 first year, positive 35,000 second year. In total, the net cash generated is plus 40,000 year one, plus 55,000 year two. So if you look at the overall cash position, the cash increased from 40 to 55,000. What's your conclusion? Now this might shock you, don't invest. Why is that? Even though the bottom line cash is positive, the final conclusion is that it's doing poorly. Think about it. Operating activity relates to the company's business. Overall, the company is losing money in its day-to-day -day activities, but it's raising money by selling long-term assets and obtaining loans. That's why cash flow from investing activity is positive. So it's raising money by selling its assets, getting loans. How long can a company survive this way? It's also raising money by two things, as I said before. Overall, cash flow from regular business is negative, but it's surviving by selling its long-term assets, getting loans. One more time, how long can a company survive this way? Not long. So remember, the most important is that cash flow from operating activity should be positive. If cash flow from investing activity 
it's, is negative, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that the company is purchasing long-term assets. What's wrong with that? Similarly, is cash flow from financing activities negative? It's not necessarily a bad thing. It means the company is paying off its loans. What's wrong with that? But if cash flow from operating activity is negative, it means the company is in trouble. Now, I want you to... I want to ask you a question. Let's look at the next illustration. Let me pose this question to you. Which is most important for evaluating a company? Which is the most important? Is it net income or profit? Is it cash flow from operating activity? Is it cash flow from investing activity? Or is it cash flow from financing activity? What I want you to do is stop this recording and think about this. And when you select one, Start this recording again. Are you done? Net income or profit is important, but profit can be manipulated. A good accountant can manipulate profits. Cash generated is more important than profit for evaluating a company because cash is cash. Of the three methods I showed you, operating, investing, financing, which is the most important? Cash flow from operating activity. So the answer to the question is, of these four, the most important for evaluating a company is cash flow from operating activity. The skill that you should have is how to convert reported net income or profit to cash from operating activity. Just remember, a company could have reported very healthy profits, but when it's converted to cash, you could get negative numbers. This means, what do you think? The company is not as healthy as it looks, and they may even be manipulating profits to make themselves look good. So it's very important to have the skill of translating or changing net income to profit. So how do you figure out cash flow from operating activity from reported profit? So you have the reported profit on net income, but you're basically trying to find out the cash from operating activity. As I said before, you could have a positive profit on net income, and when you convert it, cash from operating activity could be negative, implying the company is not as healthy as it looks. So this is the next skill you should have. How do you convert net income to cash from operating activity? To do that, there's 
There are certain rules you've got to follow, and it's very easy. There's only five rules. What are these rules? You first you start with net income. To that, you add. Let me repeat. You add depreciation expense. Why? Because depreciation is shown as an expense in the income statement, so it reduces profits. But it's not a cash payment. You don't pay anybody. Depreciation, so you have to add it back. After that, you have to subtract any increase in assets. You have to add decrease in assets. You have to subtract decrease in liability, and you have to add increase. In liability, why? Well, I, first I suggest that you print these out and have it in front of you. And as we proceed, I'll explain why you got to do what you have to do. That is, follow those rules. So, print this out. And have these rules in front of you. I want you to do a small exercise that I'm now going to show you. For each statement, does the transaction have a positive or negative impact on cash? Remember, treat each independently. So look at the rules. And for each, tell me if it has a positive or negative impact on cash. Stop this recording now and try this. After you do it, I'll explain it to you. Are you done? Okay, let's start. Accounts receivable increases by twenty. If you follow the law, it's bad for cash. Now let's take the logic. It's bad because it means the customers are buying your goods, but they are not paying you. That's why accounts receivable went up. The money they owe you increased because they don't pay you. So you are not collecting cash. So does this correspond with the rules? An increase in an asset is bad. Accounts receivable increased twenty thousand. That's bad. Inventory decreased thirty thousand. According to the rules, that's good. Inventory is an asset. In inventory decreased. That means what happened? They sold it. That's why it decreased because it was sold. So that's good for cash. Next one, accounts receivable decreased by fifteen. According to the rules. That's good because accounts receivable is an asset, an asset decreased. But why is it good? Accounts receivable decreased because they must have paid you. So you, the company collected cash. Only if the company collects cash will accounts receivable decrease. Does this correspond with the rule in front of you? It should. Asset decrease is good for cash according to the rules. Next one, accounts payable increased thirty thousand.
believe it or not, accounts payable increasing is good for cash. This means the company that you are buying and you're using stuff, but you're not paying your suppliers. So you're living off your suppliers. When you live off somebody, that's good for your cash. I'm not talking ethics, I'm talking accounting. From the ethical viewpoint, it may be bad. From the accounting viewpoint, it's good. When you don't pay, it has a positive effect on cash. So accounts payable increasing is positive for cash. Is that what the rules say? Accounts payable is a liability. What's an increase in a liability? According to the rules, it's good. Accounts payable decreasing is bad. Uh, look at the rule. Account payable is a liability. R the rules say liability decrease bad. Why is it bad though? If it decreased, it means that you paid money to your suppliers. That's why the money you owed them decreased. That's why the money you owed your supplier, the amount you owed your supplier decreased. So, have you got this? You just I went through the key logic for each of the rules. If you have got it, let's look at the next problem. I want you to look at this problem, the Barbara Streisand Company for um, a hypothetical year, 2000X. Here is the income statement. Sales, less cost of goods sold, give you gross profit. You deduct operating expenses, you get the net income. So, according to the income statement, it looks good. I want you to print this out before you proceed. Are you done? Let's go to the next one. Here's some additional information. You have an income statement. It looks positive. Everything looks hunky-dory. Now, you look at the balance sheet, and this is what you find. Accounts receivable decreased 280 during the year. Prepaid expenses increased 150,000 during the year. Accounts payable decreased 200,000 during the year. Accrued expenses payable decreased 100,000 during the year. Inventory decreased 400,000 during the year. And there was a depreciation expense of 70,000 required. Compute the cash flow from operating activity for the year 2000X. I'll give you a hint. Start with net income. So you take the net income from the income statement and then you follow the rules which I gave you. Stop this presentation now and try this exercise. When you're done, I want you to come back and I'll give you the answers. Here it comes.
the solution. If you got it right, then you are set. Net income is one million and fifty. The depreciation expense is always added because it's not a cash payment. A depreciation reduces your profit, but it's not a cash payment. So to figure out the cash, you have to add it back. So plus depreciation expense. And let's go one by one. Decrease in accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset. Decrease in an asset, is it good or is it bad? We said it's good. Logically, if accounts receivable decrease means your customers paid you money, that's why the amount they owed you went down. Next. Increase in prepaid expense. Prepaid expense is an asset. Do you remember from Module 2? So an asset increased. What does the law say? That's bad. So you have to subtract. Decrease in accounts payable. Accounts payable is a liability. What does the law say? Decrease in liability is bad. So you have to subtract. Why is it bad? Because if a liability goes down, it means you paid your supplier. That's bad from the cash viewpoint. Decrease in expenses payable. Expenses payable is a liability. Liability decreased. So you subtract 100,000. Same logic. Decrease in inventory. Inventory is an asset. What does the law say? An asset decrease is good. In this case, if inventory decreased, it means you sold it. So that's good for your cash. So when you add it, you get plus 1,350,000 cash, which means your final conclusion is the company's very healthy. They're doing well. Are you getting the hang of this? I'm going to give you a, a fairly challenging problem, and we're going to do this together as a team. So let's look at the problem. The problem relates to the Chris Rock Company. And I've given you the assets from the balance sheet for two years, 2003 and 2002. So there you have the assets in front of you. Let's look at the liabilities. So there you have the liabilities and stockholders' equity in front of you. I want you to print this out. What's in front of you, please print this out. And once you're done, we'll get started. Are you done printing? Well, here's what's required. I'm giving you some additional information which would help you. The net income from the income statement was 125. Cash dividends of 60,000 were paid. Bonds payable amounting to 50,000 were redeemed for cash, 50,000. Common stock was issued for 50,000. And the depreciation expense was 24. This is additional information which would help you. 
What I want you to do is prepare a statement of cash flows for the year 2003, and I'll give you a hint. It'll be useful to break it down into three categories. That's operating, investing, financing. Why don't you stop this recording and have a crack at it? Even if you get it wrong, don't worry. This is quite a challenging problem, but it'll really help you understand how to prepare a statement of cash flows. So stop this recording now, have a crack at it, and once you're done, restart, and I'll go through the solutions with you. Are you done? There you go. Look at this for one second. Total of the operating activity was 136. Investing activity was 35,000 negative. Financing activity was 60,000 negative. So what's the total cash generated? Plus 136, minus 35, minus 60, which give you 41. How do you know you got the right answer? You're saying that the total cash generated from operating, investing, financing activity was 41,000. How do you know it's the right number? Easy. Go back to your cash in the balance sheet. What was the opening balance? Can you see it? 22. How much cash did we compute as being generated? 41. So what should the ending balance be? 63. Look at your balance sheet. Do you get 63? I'm going to take you back. Dividends paid was 60. And now I'm going to take you forward to a summary of cash flows. Here it is. Operating 136, investing negative 35, cash from financing negative 60. So the cash generated from all activities is 41. And you know it's right because when you add it to the opening balance, you get 20, which is 22. You get 63, which is what's on the balance sheet, 63. If you had any other answer and it didn't correspond to the cash balance in the balance sheet for 2003, you know you made a mistake. So, at the end of this module, as at right now, you should have the skill to differentiate between operating, investing, financing, and you should have the skill to look at an income statement, look at a balance sheet, and prepare a statement of cash flows. This is an important skill to have. As I told you, profit can be manipulated. Cash can't be manipulated. So it's important to have the skill to be able to convert profit to cash. This concludes this module.